The topic, I will go directly to the, the topic of my presentation that is control system design for autonomous underwater transportation using four C perch uh, HAUVs. Uh, HAUVs stand for Hoovering Autonomous Underwater Vehicles. I use this name for my research uh, because I will be using the properties of autonomous vehicles on a remotely operated vehicles and uh, doing some analysis, uh, uh, which is actually using the ROV autonomously. Uh, I will uh, elaborate this in the in the further slides. <clears throat> The, the main model, modes of transportation uh, are aerial vehicles and land vehicles. The underwater transportation is not uh, generally used. Uh, the main reason behind is the, the higher hull resistance, which is due to the higher density and viscosity of water. Uh, but underwater transportation could be advantageous in certain circumstances uh, such as uh, to uh, such in the military field where the uh, military payload has to be uh, transported uh, um, undetected. Uh, it could also be used uh, in the offshore industry where the underwater uh, structures or underwater rigs are required to be transported with precision uh, and also the installation uh, in place. Uh, however, uh, this mode of transportation is only recommended for the short range of short range operations, uh, and the recommended procedure is to take the uh, take the payload to the near vicinity as near as possible, and from there the underwater uh, vehicles would take it to the exact location. Uh, as I told that I will explain that how I'm using why uh, I'm uh, using HAUV. Uh, so there are two main types of unmanned underwater vehicles which are used. Uh, that is autonomous underwater vehicle uh, and remotely operated vehicle. The autonomous underwater vehicle is untethered. Uh, they are pre-programmed. They can cover a large area in uh, in less time. Uh, but the disadvantage is that they are underactuated. That is, they have just propeller which can excel them or to accelerate them or move them in one direction, ideal direction. And if they have to move to uh, in, to a certain uh, position, then the uh, then they have to turn. Uh, on the other on the other hand, remotely operated vehicles, they are uh, tethered. Uh, they move at slow speed. They can only cover small areas, small range of areas because of the cable limitation. Uh, but they have the maneuvering capability that is called the zero steady turning uh, radius. Uh, that is, they can move in any direction with precision. Uh, if they have to move in X, Y, or Z, they can just do it without turning. Uh, and this is very much required in the underwater transportation where the payload stability is important. Uh, because we have to move in all directions with precision in order to keep the stability of the payload. So therefore, in my research and in this paper, I used the remotely operated vehicle and used it autonomously. So I call that a hoovering autonomous underwater vehicle. The, uh, there are two ways the, the, the vehicles could be connected to the payload. Uh, one way is uh, connecting the vehicles to the payload through solid links. Uh, this is easier to analyze because in this case, uh, there is no relative motion between the vehicles and payload and the whole system could be, connect, uh, could be considered a single rigid body. Uh, simulation model is very easy because we just need to take the, the parameters of all the connected bodies and then take their effect from uh, to uh, about a combined center. Uh, which in this case is the center of the payload, and a single centralized control system is enough to control the uh, control the motion of the system. Uh, on the other hand, the flexible connection uh, method, where the flexible links are used to connect the vehicles to the payload, uh, is a little complex because there are relative motions between the vehicles and the payload, and the vehicles independently decide on their positions and their swing angles with respect to the payload. Uh, to to ensure the stability of the payload uh, in the combined system, and uh, mostly decentralized control systems are used for such uh, for such analysis, where each vehicle is independently controlled to keep its position, orientation, and the and, and then ensure ensures the stability of the payload. 
in my uh, in this paper, I use the solid links between the between the vehicles and the payload, where the vehicles are rigidly connected uh, to the payload, uh, and a centralized control system uh, was designed. Uh, there are a uh, lot many uh, challenges uh, which are faced in the underwater analysis. Uh, I will just highlight two of them, uh, which are um, most important. Uh, the first one is that the underwater environment is highly nonlinear and highly coupled uh, and six degree of freedom. So in the development of the simulation model, if we ignore any of this, like if we assume some linearities or some decouplings, it will result in the deviation of the, of the results uh, from the actual. So in order to keep the results as uh, near to the, to the actual system, the nonlinearity and coupled dynamics should be kept intact in the, in the, in the simulation model. And that is done in, in, my, in my research. The other challenge is that the, under, the hydrodynamic parameters are highly uncertain. Uh, so I use the, uh, the empirical approach of calculating the hydrodynamic parameters for my system, uh, for, for the vehicle and the connections and the payload. Uh, uh, but there are other ways to do, to, of doing this, uh, like CFD analysis and some analytical way of doing it. But all of these methods, they will, they will uh, result in, or they will end up in some uncertainties. If some is having less uncertainties, others will have some more. But there would be uncertainties because even in the CFD analysis, uh, the analysis is done based on some uh, certain conditions. And if the conditions vary, uh, or in some unpredicted conditions, the, the hydrodynamic parameters would have uncertainties, which will result in the uncertainties in the, in the dynamic model. So these are the two main challenges. Um, so keeping these challenges, these, some of the technical requirements are set. Uh, the stability, there is no compromise on the stability of the, of the single vehicle and of the system. Uh, because that if the stability is, is disturbed, the, 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 the whole trans, transportation mission would fail. Uh, the, in case the, the system is following a trajectory, that trajectory could be uh, uh, could be kept within plus minus five percent, and even uh, if they are within this plus minus five percent, then we could say that the transportation mission is a is a success. And uh, finally, uh, due to all the uncertainties in the dynamic model, which would result in the uncertainties in the in the uh, uh, due to the uncertainties in the hydrodynamic parameters, a, a control system should be designed robust enough that it could account for or cater for all those uncertainties. The system which I use in, uh, for my work in this paper uh, is if I use four CPERCH HAUVs. The CPERCH is uh, basically a self-fabricated uh, ROV, which was then autonomously used in, uh, and it was fabricated in the lab facility of University College London. It's a very simple model uh, which consists of uh, pipes which are connected to elbows and T joints. On each vehicle, there are two vertical thrusters and two axial thrusters. Uh, I've done some analysis, uh, some transportation analysis with the two uh, CPERCH uh, HAUVs. Uh, but for this, for this paper, I have done the simulation model uh, with the four CPERCH HAUVs to see the motion response in more detail. Uh, so th those four CPA charges are connected to the manipulator and the manipulators are basically the plates, uh, same as fabricated in the, in the lab. And they are connected to a cubic payload in the center. As I said earlier that I developed a nonlinear couple dynamic model uh, in order to keep all the nonlinearities and couplings intact. Uh, so that I can, um, my results are as near as to the actual system. The nonlinear coupled dynamic model was developed using the newton euler formulation. Uh, so in the newton euler formula formulation, we get the kinetics and kinematics equation, uh, kinematics and kinetics equations. Uh, the important thing is that uh, we are, how, in which frame we define uh, the, the, the position orientation uh, forces uh, and the uh, acceleration. So the position and orientation are defined in the outfix frame, uh, whereas the acceleration 
uh, velocity, uh, velocities and the forces and movements are defined in the in the body fixed frame. So from the kinematics, we get the change of the position and orientation, uh, which is equal to the the uh, which which are taken equal to the uh, to the velocity after transforming them into the earth fixed frame, as we want the position and orientation in the in the earth fixed frame. We have the kinetics, which are the summation of all the forces are taken in the in the body fixed frame. And the kinetics uh, is the summation of the inertial terms, the damping terms, the Coriolis terms, uh, hydrostatic terms, and they are equated to the external uh, thrust uh, forces and movements. Uh, I won't go into the detail of it uh, because each terms, the damping terms and the Coriolis terms, uh, they are calculated empirically uh, for my system. Uh, the some of the assumptions assumptions that are taken uh, are shown as the whole system was assumed to be a rigid body of constant mass. That is, there is no uh, relative motion be between the between the mass particles after the application of force at one end. Uh, and the second uh, is that the whole system is deeply submerged, uh, so that the wave effects are ignored. In this research, in this paper, I ignored the sea current effects. Uh, and other in interaction effects with the other bodies. Uh, but in, in, in the other paper, I kept the sea current effects uh, for a system of Minerva ROVs. Uh, the center of origin is taken at the center of payload because we, in, in, in the rigid body connection, we have to take, the, take all the parameters about a, about a combined center and that combined center is, uh, is taken at the center of the payload. Uh, the whole system is, assumed to be neutrally bound. Each vehicle uh, which I fabricated in the lab, I fabricated three vehicles, but I done testing with the two. Each was, uh, uh, each was made uh, neutrally bound uh, by using the buoyancy, buoyancy sheets after the fabrication. Uh, but in this case, I assume the whole system is neutrally bound. The propulsion model, uh, there are eight axial thrusters and eight vertical thrusters in total on this system. Each vehicle is having two axial and two vertical thrusters. So combined, uh, combinedly they will have eight axial and eight vertical thrusters. Uh, I have performed some experiments uh, to calculate the axial thrust force for a single vehicle as shown in the, in the setup in, uh, in figure one. Uh, where the RO, where the C patch ROV uh, is connected to a load cell to a road, uh, where one end one end of the road is connected to the center of the the vehicle and other end to the to the load cell, uh, and then all the axial thrusters were applied at their maximum RPM, and then the load cell which was connected to the to the data analog analogger. Uh, Measured the thrust force. So the thrust force came out to be 1.6 newton. That is for the two axial thrusters. So each axial thruster would have 0.8 newton uh, thrust force. And same was also assumed for the vertical thruster. So all the thrusters on the system were assumed to produce a maximum maximum of uh, 0.8 newton each. The thrust allocation matrix was developed, taking the effect of all the thrusters about the center of the combined body. After the development of the simulation model, uh, I performed some verification tests. So in order to check whether the, 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 the complex simulation model, which is highly nonlinear and uh, coupled, uh, is giving me the right results. Uh, so I've done some testing initially before going into the controls. So in the in the first in the in the first test, uh, I applied all the axial thrusters at their maximum inward thrust. So all the axial th axial thrusters uh, on the system they will apply inward if they operate positively. So there should not be any motion, and that was verified by the by the simulation model. Uh, in the in test two, the vertical thrusters were applied at the maximum uh, positive thrust. So in, from from test two results, uh, as can be seen that the velocity of 0.25 meter per second is achieved. 
when I performed my experiments with the two R two C uh, ROVs, which were used as uh, which were used autonomously, uh, the the velocity was 0.144 meter per second, and if I double it, it would be 0.288 meter per second. Uh, though the payload was different, in that case it was a rectangular plate. In this case, it's a cube. But keeping that margin, uh, it, it is verified that the, the simulation model is giving me uh, the results, which is near to the to the actual. Uh, in test three, uh, the axial thrusters were applied such that the C perch one is. Applied positive is applied positively. C push two axial thrusters were applied negatively. Three were applied positively. Four were applied negatively. So it was to just get the motion. And obviously the the one and two they would give the axial motion, and three and four will give the uh, vertical motion. And the combined together they should be uh, a motion in the x y uh, x y plane. And 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 the curve trajectory is obtained. So this is verified that yeah, the if you apply the thrusters on the on different vehicles together, it would give us uh, an appropriate response. So after the initial verification and uh, getting confident on the uh, on the simulation model, I developed a centralized control system, as I said, for the rigid connection. Uh, only a centralized control system is enough for the whole system. Uh, so PID controls were used, which were applied on the error between the desired and actual states of the system. And the outcome was given to the, uh, to the thrust vector in the earth fixed frame. Uh, that would be the desired thrust vector. And uh, after transforming them into the body fixed frame, so as I said, that the, all the forces and movements were taken about the body fixed frame. Uh, the desired thrust vector uh, was obtained in the body fixed frame that was multiplied with the thrust allocation matrix to get the desired uh, forces of the of the thrusters, and then applying the saturation limit, uh, we can get the the actual thrust forces, and multiplying that to with the thrust allocation matrix to get the actual uh, thrust vector, and finally giving the actual thrust vector as a control input to the system. Systems dynamic. Uh, we get the the actual states of the of the system, and this process continues until the error uh, goes to zero. After the design of the control system, uh, the motion analysis uh, were carried out with the control. Thus far, uh, the the system was assigned to go to a desired vertical distance of two meter with zero motion in the other direction. And uh, the, the PID gains are shown in the table. Uh, so as can be seen that the desired displacement is achieved uh, quite well in time with even the, uh, with even uh, low PID gains. Uh, the important thing is how the thrust forces are responding, are they, how, how they are uh, applied. So it can be seen in the in the test test for thrust force result that the maximum of 6.4 newton, which is actually all the vertical thrusters are applied at their maximum uh, vertical thrust, uh, was applied. 6.4 newton combined thrust force was applied uh, for five seconds to move the system in the vertical direction. And though the, the vertical position, the, the desired vertical position is still not reached uh, in the five seconds, uh, but the thrust forces are decreasing in value. Uh, this is due to the differential gain. The differential controller has the property that it could anticipate the future and decide on how to decrease the values so that we could end up at the exact location. Means, for instance, if, if the differential gain was low, the, 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 the system would have gone higher than two meters and then negative thrust would have been applied, which is actually the excess of the uh, thrust input and which would result in the, uh, in the higher fuel consumption. Uh, but the differential, again, uh, is kept 
little higher so that it could anticipate the future and could end up the the system at exact uh, exact location so it's a simple example to to elaborate that <clears throat> after that uh, our trajectory was generated uh, the trajectory is important because the path between the start and end will have some uh, some obstacles. So we need a trajectory which could avoid that those obstacles. Uh, and there are different methods to get that trajectory, like the path planning methods, which will give the the waypoints, and then the the waypoints could be used to get the the trajectory. Uh, so in my case, I use the minimum snap trajectory, uh, which uh, produce a seventh order polynomial between the segments. Segments are actually the, the path between the two waypoints. The segment time is very important uh, because if we keep the segment time low, the, the transportation task would complete in a higher time and uh, the, the thruster would also be used uh, at low, uh, at low tr thrust values, which is not efficient. Uh, and if we keep the th th segment time very high, uh, then the higher PID gains would be used. And uh, it could also result in the, in, in, in it, it could also result in the failure of the, uh, of the tracking. Uh, so that's why an, uh, an optimized time was selected, uh, which is 20 seconds for this case. And the time step was taken 0 0.01 seconds. Uh, the tra trajectory was then implemented uh, on the system, uh, and four way, uh, four waypoints were taken, uh, uh, which makes three segments. The first segment takes the system to a heave distance of two meter, the second to a surge distance of four meter, and third is to keep the surge distance and bring the system back to the zero meter depth. Uh, <clears throat> this is a very simple, uh, simple uh, trajectory uh, in order to see like how the system respond to to this before going into the complex trajectories. Uh, as can be seen that when the low PID gains were used, as shown in the table, the the system is not responding or is not following the trajectory appropriately uh, as as desired. Uh, so for the heave motion, that is the two meter in heave in the start, the system took about 27 seconds, though it should take, it should take 20 seconds for each, each uh, segment. It took about 27 seconds. And then the second segment took about uh, 48 seconds in total. And finally, the third segment, uh, which has to be completed uh, in, in, in the next 20 seconds was not completed. So it's a failure like that the 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 system didn't uh, uh, didn't follow the trajectory uh, as desired, and also looking into the thrust force response, the thrust forces are applied with some slackness uh, and even at the lower uh, lower thrust values, uh, though they have the they have the margin to apply little higher values. So. This was the first test, uh, which showed that that those low PID gains were not able to keep the keep the track of the trajectory within the technical requirement set earlier. That is the plus minus five percent. So that's why the trajectory uh, the PID gains were increased, as shown in the table, and the same trajectory was kept. And now the trajectory is followed uh, as desired. So there is still uh, uh, still some small deviations from the trajectory, but it is it is within that uh, desired range, which is plus minus five percent, and also the thrust forces are are applied at uh, at an appropriate range. Uh, so yeah, so this was uh, actually uh, better. So in the conclusion, uh, I would just say that uh, this. Paper in this paper, uh, the a simulation model was developed for four CPU uh, HAUVs connected digitally to a payload, uh, and some initial verification tests were performed, uh, which were satisfactory. And then the control system were 
control system was designed, a centralized control system was designed with the PID controllers. And they were successful in reaching the desired goal location at low PID gains without the trajectory. Uh, and then the when the trajectory was generated and control system was uh, implemented, uh, there were some un unacceptable time lag at low PID gains uh, and which were then overcome at the higher PID gains. Uh, in the future, uh, C-current and other disturbances uh, will be included to get more realistic results. And, and also if required some other uh, types of controller, such as in, in case of the disturbances, optimal controllers or the sliding mode controller are more appropriate. So those, those will be tested. Uh, these were some of the references used. Uh, but I just said thank, thank you all.